What's up, Homo Power Rider's crew? Today's video, we're fishing a wire down the steering column. Actually, it's a bunch of wires. It's kind of like cramming 10 pounds of taters in a 5-pound bag type of wire. Cramming, yeah. So, do you guys guess what we're doing? That's right. We're putting in the turn signal switch. Now, I already have my steering column tore apart where I was doing... I thought I was actually going to fix my uh, cylinder, my locky cylinder. Come to find out, the gears inside the steering column was all messed up. So, I converted this thing now. I no longer need a key, but that's a different video. But since I already had the steering column tore apart, I went ahead and installed the turn signal switch. Now, if you guys watch my videos quite often, you'll realize that I'm reusing some footage. Back when I installed the key lock cylinder, I did the video how to tear apart the steering column and know to get down to that thing. I'm going to reuse that footage for this video because, therefore, I just didn't want to put it all together just to tear it back apart again. So, I'm going to reuse that part of that footage. If you like these DIY videos that saves you money, hit that thumbs up, subscribe, and let's roll with the video. So the first thing we need to do, take your horn button or your Jeep cap there. Just give it an easy pull. And it snaps right off. Now we got that. See that nut right there? 21 millimeter. Take it off. One, two, three, Phillips head screws. Take them out. Don't lose them now. Now you see here you got that bottom plate underneath this cup right here. Just keep them in line like that and you should be good to go. Just got them all stacked up right there. So keep track of them. Now I've got a bolt puller set here that I've had for like forever. I really haven't even used it as you can tell. Maybe a couple of bolts have been used. But if you don't have one of these it's okay. Go down to your local auto parts store say hey I, I need a steering wheel puller. And they'll hook you up with the right stuff. So I'm going to find which bolts I need, and I'll be right back. Once you figure out what bolts you need, then you're going to get out this, these contract. You know, I have no idea. And once you get the bolts you need, you're going to get the uh, piece right here that presses it out. But when it comes, it's going to be like this right here. Nothing in the center of it. And this particular kit here comes with one, two, three different tip adapters. What you want to do is size it up to where it doesn't put any pressure upon the threads as you're pressing. Say for instance this one right here, you think, huh, oh, that's flat. Well, no, not necessarily. It's kind of uh, concave there a bit. So my thoughts is, if you use that and you're pressing, it may push on the edge of those threads right there. And next thing you know, when you go put the thing back together, you're going to have a hard time putting the nut on. Not good. This one right here will work. Tidbit overkill. This one right here, got the little sharp point on it, as it does that one, but like I say, it's just large, overkill. And that will fit right that center divot right there, and give us what we need. You take your threaded rod, screw it into the plate. Now some of these plates, depending on what type of kit you get, one side is going to be kind of uh, dome shaped, one side will be flat. Obviously you need the flat side against your bolts when you go up against this. Now, when you go into the auto parts store that you ask for a steering wheel puller, more than likely what you're going to get is an H-shaped bracket, meaning, stay, stay, stay. It'll have like this and this, but it'll be open-ended, but you won't have none of this right here. Because this right here is a universal puller for you know, many different things to pull, obviously. But your standard steering wheel puller will have open ends here and here, and just be an H-shape. So, let's go ahead and get a bolt. You gotta put it in here and get this thing off there so we get this done. And once you get your threads started up inside there, run them in probably at least a good quarter inch at least. So you got a good engagement into the steering wheel. Then you'll take that center cone right there, put it in the middle of that divot in the shaft right here, and turn this until this plate bottoms out on the bolts. And as you can see, it's pretty solid right now, so I can get me a wrench right here or a socket to fit that, and we'll crank it back, let's see. Yep, bigger socket, be right back. Okay, I've got a 14 millimeter socket on it, and now we just slowly start applying pressure. Don't get carried away. Little by little. And there she goes, she's off. Ta da Wasn't that so easy? And like I said, don't get manhandling it or he man it, whatever term you want to use. Slow and easy, because you got to disengage the steering wheel hub from those splines right there. So you just want to ease it off there. So the tool we're going to use to press that plate in to hold it back while we get that spring 
has different sizes, 91613 or M415 right here. So we're going to take this contraption off right here, and we're going to figure out which side we need. It's metric. So the end of using is an M4 1.5. So what we do is then we take this, turn it back around this way, put it over the end of the shaft here, and slide that pin back in. Get in there. Darn it, girl. So it's got a little divot ball right there on the end of it, so it actually just presses in. Now that we figured out, we're going to use the M14.5 set on here like this. This, put that on there, and I hear the comments. I hear the comments. You don't need that tool. All right, so here's what you would do if you didn't use the tool. Let me just get that there so it just kind of kind of loose. If you wasn't going to use the tool, what you would have to do is press that center plate in, and it's got some pretty it's pretty stout. You got to press that center plate like that, and then all at the same time holding that center plate in wedge out that ring can it be done absolutely because i've done it several times but is it kind of cumbersome and a pain to tell yeah it can be so get this tool aligned here we're going to take a little wing nut start cranking down a little bit and when i get the ring exposed which it is now i'm going to show you guys how you need to position this okay See the H of the tool here. Try to position your steering wheel so that you've got the gap and that ring right there. I hope the camera's picking it up. I see the viewfinder. Let me zoom in on it. Okay, see that snap ring right there? See that gap? You want that gap to the top or to where you can get to it the easiest possible. Because you're going to get you a couple flat screwdrivers, or if you got a pick, that'd be great as well. Get in behind that snap ring. You want to wedge it upward, then off. So let's see how cooperative it's going to be. This ain't like it's been for the past couple weeks, woman. It's not going to be cooperative. But we'll find out. The little old girl, my old YJ, she's been cranky lately. Okay, so I'm gonna try to turn this a little bit so you guys can get a little bit of a view of what's going on here. So you get the small screwdriver, if you can get under that snap ring. Get it lifted up, take a bigger one, get in behind it. Let me show you. See how I've got the bigger, bigger screwdriver behind it holding the snap ring from snapping back down inside that groove. And once you get it like that, I really hope that last take took because me and this new camera don't get along very well. But get in behind that holding it, screwdriver, get in behind that snap ring on the, let me switch hands, hold it here and take and walk that ring out of that groove. There she goes. But I don't want to turn it, don't move your screwdriver just yet because sometimes it can miraculously, as they say, pop right back in place and you don't want that. So now we got it up out of that groove. Now I'm just going to let it sit there so you guys can see what's up. See that right there? We got that snap ring out of that groove now. So we can take this tool off. So once you get that snap ring pulled out a little bit, you, then you can take your plate. Loosen your wing nut here will allow that plate to come back this way. And at one point, <clears throat> it gets loose. Then you unscrew it. And set the tool to the side for the moment. Now, most of the time, you can take this flat plate, the plate that you're taking out here, and it'll walk that ring off sometimes. Depends on how much texture you've got in this shaft right here. So it's wanting to be cantankerous, so I'm just going to take my screwdriver, get in behind it, a little gentle twist, and almost stab my hand. 
little gentle twist and it'll walk right off there that way. Then we get to that and we're here. There we go. Then we take this, shimmy it off, and there you go. Sit down here with my other parts. And gently take that off because you got this little center piece right here. But when you repush that, it's making contact inside there for this ring. So be sure you don't get no pots falling out. Alright, so now here's what we got going on. You got to need your Phillips head screwdriver. Let me, my viewfinder flips. I need to see what I'm doing here. We're going to have a screw right back here, one right there, and one right there. Now I've got, I've got one of these right here, a new one to change out. It's not going to be today because this wire goes all the way down through the steering column, and I'm just not that froggy right now. But I need to get this right here fixed, which is the subject for the day. Now that we've got this stuff out of the way, we've got three Phillips head screws to take care of. One, two, and three. Way back down inside that hole. Now this one right here is all, wait a minute, it's all covered up. I can't get to that one. Sure you can. Right turn. Right there. Wide open. So, flip this up. Make a right turn. Get to that screw. Then take that one out and take that one out. And we'll work that piece out of there. I wasn't ready then, but I am now. Let's put the switch in. So before you start pulling everything out, let's just compare our wiring to make sure more and our color codes are about the same. And we'll also unplug it, plug it in, make sure it's all good before we go through the headache of pulling that wire up through the column. But we got the white, white, green to green, yellow to yellow, violet to violet, brown to brown, blue to blue, space, light blue to light blue, black to black, green to green, and brown to brown. That's good to me. All right, so we're going to go ahead and separate this right here. See so if I can do that one hand without the camera. Without setting the camera down. Apparently not. So I'm going to separate that and we'll test plug it in and see what it feels like. Just plug right in there. So I think we're good to go. But I'm going to do one more quick test and I'll be right back with you to show you what I, how to do it. Now if you want to test the functionality of it before you go wiring it all through that column right there, just push it. I can hear my little relay clicking. Turn the other way. See, it goes back to center right there. See, I got my little light flashing right there. I gotta find my cover. I don't know what I've done with it. And we come over here. And we got a turn signal right there. Right there. And of course, we'll have it in the rear. You simply take and push it again. Oh, I'll get my hand hold of it right. There we go. And got that. Now, of course, then you also say, hmm, check out my screw locations. Make sure my screw locations are good. Yes. And once you verify all that good stuff, then we'll take this out. So basically what you want is the ability to have a wire, a pull wire, to go back down the column. Because you're going to take your new contraption here, and you're going to pull, put your pull wire on the end of it right here, fold your wiring back against it, like, against itself like this, and feed this plastic piece down the column. Uh, can it be done without having a pull wire? Yes, it can. Is it easy? Not exactly, no. So what we're going to do is, we're just going to pick a wire out of all this mess, single it out, and we'll cut it, leave it in place from the bottom here, right here. And uh, say for instance, we use this, I don't care which one. Let's say we use that one since it's on the outside. We cut that one here, leave it. And since the color code is right there, we'll cut that out and leave it up here. And that's also one of the longer wires too, because it comes all the way over into here. So it gives you a little bit more, more room to play with. So we'll use that as our pull wire. Uh, where my cutters go? So take your cutters. And get as much length as possible out of it. Holding the camera and doing it at the same time. Coordination, yeah. Got that. And anyway, you'll pull that through the switch, let it hang out. You'll see here in a minute, but it's kind of difficult to do with one hand. And underneath here, that should be that wire right there. Snip it. 
And actually, we're going to go ahead and cut this whole end off. Because that way, we can just pull the harness straight up out of the column and not have to worry about the whole thing. So we're going to cut this whole thing off right here. There she goes. All right, so now I'm going to use both hands. I'm going to pull that wire up out of the switch, and we'll be back in a moment. All right, well, I didn't realize or I didn't notice it put it that way. That's a bonded pair, which means these pair of wires are bonded together, like speaker wire right here in the middle. So that's not actually a bad thing, because we can use both ends of this wire here to make a knot to tie onto this to feed it through. So now that we've got this cut loose from this, this wire stays in. So it's going to be the green and the that color there. We're going to pull this down. That'll be these two wires. Right? Oh, shoot. I didn't pull that through. Whoo! I cut that close. Right there, because you, you want to leave that wire. So what we're going to do is, we're going to take one hand, pull this. Other hand holds this wire to prevent it from pulling through. So grab hold of this. Make sure this is pulled over to the side so it doesn't snag on anything. And if you want to, just make yourself feel better. Grab hold of the wire down at the bottom, top. Like you're flossing your teeth back and forth. Yes, we have the correct wire. Hold it right here. Do not turn it loose. Pull this up. There it is. Pull it right out. Yay! And what else did I pull out of there? Huh, look at that. We got uh, like mud inside the steering column. Wonder how that got there. Change the camera angle a little bit to give you guys a little bit better view. And actually the sun was like glaring around the lens. So what we've done, that bonded pair that we left in there, tied a simple knot right there, but it gets the back side of this. On the front side, tie your knot, just two simple overhand knots. Keep your knot inside the slot, inside the slot. Why? Because you gotta go through a slot right now through there and you want this profile of this, all this right here as flat as possible for it to go through. So once you get the two overhand knots tied, keep them inside as much as possible if you got to. You know, squeeze them inside there, however you got to, try to keep them in there as much as possible. And then take your wires, tuck them back along the plug, again, keeping this slender as possible. Then we take and pull our wire from the bottom, down here I'm pulling this. Again, there's that whole profile thing trying to keep it flat because I'm right on this screw right there. Okay, I had a little bit of a quandary that I had actually forgotten about. Going down inside the column with all these wires that are feeding through, there's a clip inside there. It's a flat clip that kind of wraps, it hits the column like this, comes around and wraps under like this, and the wire tucks through it all, holding it all up next to the column, and a nice and flat like that. I'm hoping you guys can see it down in the column, but there's like that little channel that's right down there. And it actually it runs right there. So my little pull wire situation is not going to work out like I wanted it to. But let's see what we can do. Let me figure out how to feed it sending that through there, and I'll be back with you to show you what I did. Okay, I've made progress, but I don't even know remotely know how if I can explain how I did this. Right here on the end of the plug. I took a piece of that wire, fed it through this way, and circled back around through this way to lock it in place so it would give me a good pull wire. There was a little tab sticking out right here. Since there's no working wire there, I cut that tab off to keep that wire as flush as possible against the plug here. And by coming in out this way with it and looping back around this way, sticking it inside there, it locked it in place creating a good anchor point for a pull wire. So as I pull it down through there, of course there's that sleeve right there, I hit it. And I just got lucky enough to finagle it from the outside of the sleeve. How? Because I took this aluminum rod right here, fed it down through that sleeve right there. That aluminum rod is actually right through there. See, I watch it move. So that allowed me to push the wiring harness over that way a little bit to push the plastic through will allow the, the plastic clip to clear the edge of this to allow it to come on through. Now at this point, what I still got to fish it down through the column here, 
But once I get down through the bracket, I could probably tuck the wiring harness back up inside here. So that's what I'm about to attempt, and you'll see here in a minute if it worked or not. So, yeah, there's that. I hope you guys understood that, because I'm not pulling that back out. You know, technically, I could just pull this wire down across, come right down this side of that bracket, and call it good. But I am going to make a good attempt to do it the right way. If it gives me much more issues, it's coming on this side of the bracket, and I'll call it a day and be done with it. Okay, before I start pulling it through and I lose it, that, I was able to get that clip underneath that plastic sleeve right there, and maybe, just maybe, I could pull it on down through like that. But I, what I ended up doing is take a screwdriver, using this as a leverage, leverage that plastic back to push that clip underneath that plastic sleeve right there. So we're about to find out if that's going to work or not. So I wanted to show you this before I started pulling. Look at that. I am so close, it's about to squeeze through. So what I've done, taking the both sides of the steering column bracket there, and I've about got that now back there, but I was going to show you guys what's up. And I got me an extension on this one back here, half inch, uh, extent, half inch socket with extension, got them all loosened up. Now I can move the column up just a little bit. And, uh, well, I can't even more once I get this bolt out. It's not going to move a whole lot because you got that plate right there. And it's got a flex against that. But it should, as you see right there, it should give me enough clearance to pull that clip on through. So I'm going to pull it all through and I'll be right back. through. Come on, you're about there. You're about there. Up there. You can do it. You can do it. Come on. There she goes. Ah, oh, I can breathe now. Much better. Now tuck your harness up inside there. And we'll put the bolts back in place. You may have to push your column down just a little bit because it does want to flex that plate down at the bottom and it makes it a little cantankerous about lining the bolts back up. So get all four of them started before you start tightening them up. And I'll tighten them up and we'll start plugging things up. Now here's what I was talking about running that wire through this right here to create a pull anchor. There used to be a tab right there. I cut that tab off, which allowed this wire to sit back flat against that to give me more clearance to go through the column. Now, came out that hole, fed it back over into that slot right here. Now I had to take a screwdriver and kind of cram it back up inside that slot to make it lock in. But that gave me a good pull anchor, and it's thin because, I mean, this wire right here is pretty well in line with these right here, obviously. And this right here tucks in so, deep, uh, so well behind this it gave me a good clearance pull to come through the column so yep i forgot all about that contraption right there being in there so yeah that made it a bit more difficult but hey we have conquered come on camera stay it see just barely teetering on the balance point of wanting to fall backwards let me see if i can stick my screwdriver lay a screwdriver on it really stay. there we go Trying to cam, try to cam, try to cram cameras in places they don't normally go. So here we go. We just take that groove right there. Got this tab, and all this stuff right here sticks out this end, and click locks right in. And right there, see the width of this right here, right there on the column is where that hooks into. But right now we're gonna feed that up through here so we can get plenty of wire up there to get all that stuff put back together. Then we'll worry about this. Now as you start repositioning this right here back in its place, it's gonna kind of tuck in like this. Where's my screws? Right like this. It's gonna kind of tuck in there like that, but down here, we'll have to pull some of that wiring harness down this way to make this lay back down inside there flat. So, yep, that's where we have at the moment, and I'm going to get all that situated, and we'll be on it. Got that screw in right there, got this in down here, and I'm about to put that little clip and all that fun stuff on right here to put that in. And somebody's going to say, oh, you forgot to put your key cylinder back in. 
you guys, I, I'll link up another video to where you guys can see I had issues back up inside here. And I may just get to parts and fix that gear sometime or another. <clears throat> but for right now, I've got a keyless entry, a keyless start, that's it, yeah. I don't have to use a key at all, but I'll link that video up if you guys can see that. But I'm either going to try to do an S10 steering column swap, and because that's a popular thing. What I would really like to find for this rig is find an S10 column or even a Jeep column. Uh, minimal fabrication because I want to make it as easy as I can for you guys to do your mods and stuff. But I'd love to put a tilt wheel in this. Rust bucket has tilt wheel in it, but it's an automatic rig, so it's got the uh, shifter sticking out right here. But, so, if I can find me an S10 column that has, you know, no stalk sticking out for an automatic and tilt, I'd probably snag it and see about, you know, converting this thing over. And see if it's as easy as they say it is. I've never done it. I've read it super easy, but, hey, who knows. So now I'm going to put this right here in and that and continue on. Now, putting this piece right here back in, see it's got a little ball right there. It's got to go into a slot up inside where is that come on camera you can do it i got another camera on order that's much better than this one i wish it hurt get here anyway there's a slot right there that it feeds into anyway it's up inside there then the rest of it feeds upside right here now put that screw in right there now we got this in place and you can see that the slot with a ball fit right here this bracket comes up goes in that slot how it works the contact for the turn signals. Now the reason I was changing it out to begin with is that whenever I made a left hand turn, I'd push it down and it'd, it'd want to pop back up all the time. So I had to hold this down all the time or put it in a sweet spot or something like that just to make it stay. And then sometimes whenever it stayed down and I straightened the steering wheel, sometimes it'd go up, sometimes it wouldn't. It was just really erratic as to when it worked. And even at that, sometimes the contactors and stuff was just erratic whenever they wanted to work. And so it should, to put in a new switch and should fix all that. It was a pain in the tail, obviously, as we just seen. But hey, it's done. It's over. We're good. Now, putting this back together, you notice that your steering shaft will kind of come down and up. Because as you work with it, you may inadvertently start pushing and bumping it downwards to my cat. And no, then you're thinking, I can't get my spring back on. I can't get my spring back on. And in reality, you just pull that shaft upward, and it'll give you the clearance down here to that groove when you get ready to put it on. Now, as you've seen, this goes on first before we put this other plate on. Plate means this right here. But look real close. Look at these teeth. All these teeth evenly spaced except for the gap right here to right there. Look at your shaft. Gap right here to right there. So whenever you put this on, of course, you know, put this in first before you do it. But I'm just still illustrating. Those teeth have to line up, otherwise you're going to press teeth face turns blue and nothing's going to happen. So, there you go. So, this will go in, thereabouts. So, be sure you got your splines all lined up. It should slide right up on it kind of loosely like, and this right here is going to float in there, so that's no problem. Then we set our tool up to go, where did I lay it at? Then we set our tool up on there, and I'll show you how that is here in just a moment. Now, one thing you want to keep tabs on is the these uprights right here. Throughout the action of pressing and the pressing this off, like sometimes these things will want to spread on you a little bit. So be sure they're kind of tucked inward so they stay on the inside of the plate and press evenly. Because if they come too far out here, you got fingers out here. That's all. Let me pull this off and I'll show you. See this right there? If they get too far out there, they'll tend to want to flex those fingers. And... So try to keep it in the center right there. It presses more evenly and doesn't bind. Now before you install the tool or put it in place, be sure you get that snap, snap ring in place because you're pressing that plate down to lock that snap ring back into that groove. And I have done it. Put the tool on, get it all pressed down, reach for the snap ring, but uh, snap. And yeah, because you can't spread that spring and put it on because then you'll mess it up. So slide that on there first before you run the tool down and once you get it snug down just keep tightening up that wing nut and it'll press that on in as you see right there is the groove you want to just come past this plate right here and it's all you need then you'll take a couple flat screwdrivers and push that on down snap it in place but you just need to push that plate just a little past that groove you know no po no point in going too far and binding the spring or stressing your tool out too much so just enough past that plate snap your ring in 
And once you get that ready, take your screwdrivers, one on top, one on bottom, and just walk it. And there she goes. And I kind of broke one of the wings off my tool. But once you get in place, back it out slowly. And you may have to, you know, seat the plate a little bit, but just back it off. It'll go. Then as you put your steering wheel back on, just make sure it post comes up through there. And you'll probably beep your horn in the process if you don't have your battery unhooked. But just get on there and push and twist a little bit. Those splines will line up. And, yep, there's that. Then there's a nut. And we'll screw that on and lock her down. When you put this piece right here back in, pay attention. See your steering wheel? How it forms a T right there? This slot goes toward the top because you've got an alignment area on your horn button right there that fits into that groove that aligns. Hey, your beep beep button goes up like this right here. So be sure you put that part on right. Okay, there's that white plug that we was playing with earlier. If you notice right here on the ends, that's that bracket that's on the steering column. There's slots at each end of that white bracket, uh, white uh, plug. It slides right over the end, so that right there, that forward keeps your wiring harness up uh, underneath your dash. So if I have to give you guys any piece of advice about doing this particular job, is don't act like me, okay? I am bullheaded, impatient, you pick something, okay? I'm just like that. I didn't want to take the trim out of the dash and stuff like that. Because, why should I? I pulled it out, I should be running back down through. Taking those four bolts out, which allowed me to pick up the steering column, which allowed it to slide right on through, a few minutes, Skeeter after me. That gave me just a little bit more extra room for everything to slide on through, and it's so much easier. Bullheaded. Also, quarter inch steel rod, aluminum rod, to run down through there to open up that um, trim piece to allow that wire to slide down through there, that made life a lot easier as well. So everyone, do those few extra steps. It's not a bad job, okay? So everyone, if you learned something from this video, hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave us cool comments down below. Appreciate you hanging out. Peace. Later, y'all.